This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. We're now going to begin the process of placing target bones. Target bones allow us to anchor in certain parts of the rig. For instance, if you want your rig to appear that the feet are planted on the ground and that there's gravity, anchor bones are a great resource. And the same goes if you want to create a squash and stretch effect. You don't have to do it just on the ankles. You can do it with arms, any sort of object or body or whatever you want to do. But we'll keep it simple and focus on the feet for this course. The first thing I want to do is make sure I'm on the bone layer. And I also want to make sure I'm on frame zero. Next, grab the add bone tool. And we want to make sure that nothing is selected for this. So alt and click outside so that no bone is red. Nothing is selected. And then we're just going to come down here and click once to establish a pin bone. Now you could do a traditional bone like this if you wish. However, I feel pin bones work just as well. And they're a little bit neater in terms of how they look on the canvas. And then we have the second target bone, but we also want that to be independent. Just click off with alt click to make sure nothing is selected and then click over here to establish the second target. Now how you have your targets set up really depends on how you create your characters. If I didn't have my ankles established here, this would be a little bit different. I would probably bring the targets closer to the heels and have the center of gravity focus there. But again, given how the ankles are set up, it actually makes more sense to alter this so that the target bones are focused at the edges of the leg bones here. And then we can adjust the foot bones to compensate for that. So let's take the transform bone tool. I'm going to grab this target and let's just move it over and put it right there. And you'll notice as you get close to these bones, so I'll do it with this one it'll automatically snap to the edge of a bone. So that is a good example of that. And actually looking at this, I might come in and move this one down just a little bit more with the transform bone tool and then place it down like that so it's closer to the edge of the pants like this one is. The thing about target bones is you really want everything to connect in order for this to work. And so we want to adjust the foot bones so that they are connected to the target. And if we grab this bone and bring it up, we can snap it to the center of that target. Now this doesn't really work for the feet, but if we rotate it down, you can see that we can get something to kind of work out. Now it might be beneficial for us to move this down even more. So I can move the target maybe down closer to here and then we can bring the leg bone down like that. And then we can take this foot bone, as long as we can select it. We have to zoom in just to grab it. And then snap it in just like that. And then rotate it down like so. And we can repeat this process now for the other side. Let's just grab the target and bring it down grab the edge of this and just scale it up a little bit. Make sure the target is snapping on. And for the same with the foot, make sure it snaps over and we can bring it down to establish it just like that. So once you have your bones connected, you need to tell Moho what to do with these two new bones. First, let's take the select bone tool and we can click on the right bone that we just established and rename it to front target and then hit enter. Now, if you were doing multiple targets, let's say you had targets on the feet, on the hands, on the head, 
you would probably want to be more explicit with your names, but since I plan to only use two targets for the rig, front target and back target should suffice for what I'm doing. Now, once you've established what the targets are, or once you've named them, you want to target them by using the bone that comes before the target, essentially, which is going to be the calves. And so let's click on the front calf, come over here to bone constraints, and I want to come down to where it says target. Click on that, and here we're going to see all of the bone names, and then we want to go all the way down to front target and click. Once we do this, you'll see that we establish a target just like this in the middle to indicate that this target has been assigned. We can click on the back leg calf and assign this then to back target, which again, will do the same thing in terms of how it's visually representing this. So now, if we come back here and we can go to frame one, if I were to come in and let's say take the pelvis bone and move it down, you can see that we have something like this going on now. Of course, the legs are glitchy, but what's happening here is whenever we move this down, it's basically treating these as focal points or gravity points so that basically we can bend down, the legs bend, and we can have that sort of grounded look. Of course, ignoring the glitched legs. Now, you can notice that the feet are rotating as we go up and down, and you could come in and manually correct this as you go. So you can see I can kind of do this, and it works for the most part. We can get those heels lined up, and it's not looking too bad. But we could also, let me just remove these keyframes really quick, go back to frame zero, select the select bone tool with B on the keyboard. And this time I'm going to hold in shift and click on the front foot so that both feet bones are selected. And if we come over here to the bone constraints, the second option down is independent angle. If you click on this and close, and now if we were to come in and try moving this around, you can see that the feet remain planted on the ground. And because of how we have the ankles set up, we could come in and maybe do some smart actions for this. And we might actually end up doing that just to kind of help. You can see though that it's looking a lot better than it was. We can at least kind of hide the fact of what it's doing and we just kind of have to be aware of the limitations. You know, you can't maybe go like this unless if you decide you want to go in and adjust a smart action to compensate for that along with everything else. But that is looking good. I think it suits what we're doing for this rig. So I'm going to pause here and up next, we can keep working with this character. To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit tunefiles.com.